Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. I don't know what situation you're facing right now, but I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost. It's set in stone. There's an angel being placed on the door of your circumstance. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, friend. What you couldn't move before God is going to move it for you. Let me explain something to you. Did you know that the tomb was really a womb because out of the tomb was birthed the faith of Jesus in the world. Christianity was born through the power of the resurrection. And through the power of the resurrection, the tomb became a womb. It became a birthing canal for Christianity. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set up on it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. Remember the promise in the book of Revelation. He said, I'm going to open to you doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. God has the answer. He is the answer and he will move any door that needs to be moved. He'll open any door that needs to be opened and he'll shut any door that needs to be shut. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Remember what he did at the ark when he shut the door. The Bible said that the Lord himself shut them in to the ark. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord himself shut them into the ark. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. This angel's countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. They became as dead men. And they fell on their face because of the fear of the glory of God that was upon the angel of the Lord. It's interesting, at the death of Jesus, there was a major earthquake. At the resurrection of Jesus, there's a major earthquake. <laughs> And at the coming of the Lord, when the saints are resurrected, there's another earthquake. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But what's happening before that earthquake takes place? There, it, there's a rumbling in the earth, the Bible says. What is it? It's the beginning of birth pains. We're, we're in the shandarabakashi. We are in the rumbling stages right now. We're in the tremor stages, the trembling stage of the birth pains. We are really getting ready to experience the birth pains. But hold on, because look up to heaven for your redemption draweth nigh. Somebody needed to hear that this afternoon. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not. 
ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But notice this. The angel sat on the stone that needed to be rolled away. Why did he sit on the stone? Now, notice the angel said something that is amazing. He said to the woman of God, the woman that believed Jesus, that's the only real reason she would have been at the tomb because, see, the men ran away and hid like cowards, but the Bible says that the women stayed behind at the cross and preached, ministered to the soldier who said, truly this was the Son of God. And I can imagine Mary that got seven devils cast out of her. She say, he ain't just, he, he ain't just was, he is the son of God. And he's getting ready to rise again. She believed the scripture. The men, they had a little bit of trouble. They had a little bit of doubt in their shout. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Sister Cheryl, God bless you. Glad you could tune back in. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But it was set in stone, and the angel said, Fear not. Do you know throughout Scripture from Old to New Testament, Old Testament's Christ concealed, the New Testament is Christ revealed. And it says that, it says, fear not, 365 times. There is 365 days in the Gangorian calendar, the Gentile calendar. And you know what? He wanted to let us know that our Gentiles, that he loves you. It's going to be all right if you're in trouble in your life. Honey, you ain't got no trouble. All you need is faith in God. Hallelujah. You ain't got any trouble. All you need is faith in God, Brother Shambach said. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. But the angel was sitting on the stone. What does that even mean? I prayed about that, and I dug into that in the spirit, in prayer, and, uh, oh, well, glory, how in the world did that happen? Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. The angel was set down on the stone, and I prayed, and the Lord said, there's a message in that in itself. The angel was set down on the stone. What was he resting for? The angel was resting because the Lord had finished his work. Who are you hearing me? That brother was resting in the resurrection of the Lord. Because remember in Jude, when Satan comes to find the body of Moses that has gotten up with the other saints that happened during the earthquake when Jesus got up, they got up and Moses was one of the people that got up because Satan went looking for the body. And he saw Michael. Satan saw Michael there. And the first thing Michael does without even opening his mouth, you sorry devil, look at you. You ain't nothing but a whip pup. He don't give no accusations like that. He just looks at Satan and says, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. And he had to leave. Satan had to leave. Wait a minute. That's the only time is in the New Testament that we ever see an angel rebuke a devil. He said, Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Even the angels of God, mm, help me, Holy Ghost, that angel that was at the stone, the angels that was talking that, that day where Moses had resurrected from, let me explain something to you. They were resting 
in the resurrection. They were resting in the finished work. They didn't even have to lift a sword against the enemy. All they had to do was say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And he had to leave because it's finished. The Bible said that Jesus made an open spectacle. I like that word. An open spectacle of the devil. He disarmed all of the principalities and powers and made fun of them. He totally humiliated the powers of darkness. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But the Lord showed me the angel, Sister Joy, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. The angel that was there, that was sitting on the tomb, had a message to deliver, but he wouldn't stand enough. He was sitting down. Why? Because he was resting in the resurrection. He was resting in the finished work that it's done. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. It is done. Uh, Done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. He was resting in the resurrection. As we are to do. We're to learn to do it. Hebrews 4 and 11, the Bible says we are to strive. That word means to struggle, to make every effort possible, Hebrews 4 and 11, to enter into the rest of God. One thing as a minister, it's hard for me to do. I hear it from the doctors. I hear it from other people. You need to rest your voice, Brother HR. You need to stop preaching for a little while. You need to rest. You need to rest. You need to rest. I'm like, well, you don't understand the ministry that God's given me. I can't rest until it's time for me to die. That's what I've told everybody for years. I say I get all the sleep I need when I'm dead. But, you know, here's the thing. God gives his beloved rest. So there are times, and the Lord's been dealing with me about this, I need to force myself to rest. Just just shut the phone down. Just shut everything off, everyone off. And get into the presence of the Lord and get my rest that I need in Him. Because if I don't, I'll be at the point of burnout. Amen. Can somebody say, that's good preaching, brother. Brother Shane, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We church folks, ministers included, mainly really ministers, struggle the most with entering into the rest of God. But his rest is the best for us. Amen. I'm almost done. I'm not going to be before you much longer. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Luke 5.16 Jesus frequently went away to pray to gain strength, to gain rest. He would go out into the wilderness. Now, this is interesting, okay? He would go back to where he had the encounter with the Father, where the Father helped him through the struggle, through the testing of the enemy. He got strength from the Spirit in the wilderness. And the Bible says that Jesus would go back frequently back to the wilderness. He would minister and the disciples wouldn't see him for days. They're like, this ain't nothing new. He stays gone. And then he'd just show back up on the scene. You remember the scripture said that Satan left Jesus alone for a season. The devil never really leaves you alone for long. But for a season, you know why it's a season? Because he's taking time to go back and lick his wounds. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He's thinking, maybe I underestimated 
Jesus is what the enemy was thinking when he looked at Jesus. He's like, I think I better go back and re-examine this and and reevaluate this. Now, the Bible says God in the book of James cannot be tempted, nor can he tempt any man. But yet Jesus, God in flesh, was tempted. Why? Because Satan could tempt the skin that God was in. As long as God was in the flesh, he could be tempted. In fact, the Bible said he was tempted with every sin, but failed not. Every sin that is common to man, but yet he failed not. Aren't you glad he failed not? Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Remember, it's not wrong to rest. Even God the Father rested on the seventh day. Genesis 2, 2 through 3. He even promised that if we will walk with him, he'll give us rest. Exodus 33, 12 through 14. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, David mentioned resting when he got to heaven. Psalms 55, 4 through 8. Remember my confession? I said, I'll get all the sleep I need when I'm dead. <laughs> That's what David said. I'm going to get all the sleep I need when I'm dead. I'm going to get all the rest I need then. But God the Father wants us to rest, enter into his rest in this earth. Matthew 6 and 10. On earth as it is in heaven. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Salvation, peace, joy, healing. It's for us. Third John 1 and 2, he said, Brethren, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Salvation, sozo, completely lacking nothing. All of our rest is found in our big brother, Jesus. Amen. Brother Mike, God bless you. Glad you could tune in, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Your rest and mine is found in Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. God promises to give us rest. Amen. He gives his beloved rest. And he said, if we will, he, he said, come unto me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. So maybe... He, he says rest twice in that same scripture. So if he says it twice, it's established. He has established that he will give us his rest. If we will call upon him, we will have his rest. Call upon the Lord. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're ready for a revival within your own life, not just within your city, but within yourself, amen? That's where true revival starts is in the, within the heart, amen? If you're ready for true revival, pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead. Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me, fill me with your precious spirit, that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. My question to you tonight before I close the telecast is this. If the angels are resting in the finished work of Jesus, why aren't you? The Bible said that we'll find rest when we search for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Seek and you shall find. Amen. Knock and the door. Ask. 
Seek Knock. It's actually the pseudonym for Ask. <laughs> Ain't that cool? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus into your heart and ask him to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. I want to celebrate with you in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Our for revival at yahoo.com. In Jesus' mighty name, write to me. Our for revival at yahoo.com. If you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of infirmity. I command a creative miracle to come into your body from the body part rooms in heaven. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, deliver each and every person bound in Jesus' name. I thank you that they're being set free by the power of of the Holy Ghost of God in Jesus' name. And I declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them, they will condemn it in judgment in Jesus' name. Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And for those seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, I pray now, do it, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you got saved, healed, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. If you desire to give, you can do so by going to Cash App and typing in Cash Tag Iowa for Revival. Your love gives large or small. Keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad. Sister Selena, God bless you. I hadn't seen you in a while. I love you. Everybody, if you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification for more videos just like this on YouTube. Amen. I love y'all. God bless. Bye-bye.